Frost sniff. <laughs> Make of the camera. What noise would a lizard man make? It's not like horses go boom <laughs> kind of thing. Well, you know what the Velociraptors did in Dress Up? <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be that sound. <laughs> Have you seen the thing on Facebook with the little turtle? They're doing the Coldplay music video. <laughs> They're doing it. And a turtle actually make a noise. He goes, ah. So it'd be that. The, the, the actual lizard man on top of it. <coughs> and the big carnosaur <laughs> thing. Ah. Is that your question of the day for me? No. <laughs> <clears throat> just so you know, my girlfriend's just there and she's disapprovingly nodding her head. She's shaking. Wasn't it? Same difference. You were. <laughs> Look at your face! It wasn't. <laughs> Hello and welcome to this May sit and paint video with me, Mark from the Zoom Image channel. And today with me, of course, I have with me. I'm in. Hi. He's Ian. Hello. Okie dokie, we've got quite a number of questions to go through, which is brilliant to see. Um, but we all, we're starting to kick off now with a question for each other. Our big question. Was that your big question? No, that wasn't my big question. Okay. I Do you have a question for me or no, the you, subscribers? No, you go first. Please. Okay. It's kind of one for the, the subscribers. Um, a few people have written this on some of our YouTube videos, and I know you're not too keen about it. Um, it's about an Indiegogo campaign. A few, two or three, I think four people, have said, have you thought about doing an Indiegogo campaign? I have, um, but I wanted to get feedback from the subscribers. So I'm hoping this video in itself gets over 100 views. And then I hope everyone who watches this can just do a quick comment for me. If we get a hundred comments, then we can do, then we can get a rough guesstimate of who thinks it's a good idea or who thinks it doesn't. So the Indiegogo campaign that I'd be thinking to do for the channel would be a total of five hundred pounds to a thousand pounds. Now, what would that get us? Well, it would be able to pay for better lighting. Um, when we've gone to Warhammer World, the studio lights they have there is amazing. When we're here, we have natural sunlight, which isn't amazing. And you can look at two of our videos, a Warhammer World one and a normal one where we're here, and there's a huge difference in quality. And that is just due to the lighting. If we were to go for the larger scale of the Indiegogo campaign, um, we could get a second camera where Ian and I could use it just for little quick vlogs. So a five, 10 minute piece, or a video of Ian doing his dwarves that he still needs to paint, for example. <laughs> we would then be able to put money into uh, Warhammer Fantasy, New Terrain, and also our 40K armies that we both like, but we're just not financially able to do, such as Skitari, or Orcs, or Demons, or adding more to the armies we've got for narrative campaigns. Now, one hindrance is the fact that we're a wargaming YouTube channel. This isn't our jobs like mini wargaming. That is what their business is. We do videos once or <laughs> twice a week. <laughs> She's just sneezed. <laughs> once or twice a week so we Bless can't you. guarantee that um, we can produce more videos we could guarantee better quality videos with more variety of narrative campaigns more models more series of building up an army looking at the tactics and doing community-led armies where the community can have a say so in what units you use as well um, and th that would be it, but it would have to be in m the mind of, if you do commit to this Indiegogo campaign, you have to remember that we won't be pumping out as many videos, and you're providing us with financial support for our hobby so that you can watch it. 
But I was thinking the other day, if we had a hundred of our subscribers that knew 10 people, including themselves, that would donate a pound, that would be the thousand pounds. And we could do things like prizes and stuff or gifts of goodwill like thank you videos or giving away models or meeting us at Warhammer World and we buy you lunch and battle us and be part of the channel we do a video or whatever so that was what I was thinking you're not so keen it's not that I'm not so keen I just <clears> think <throat> we need a more substantial base to go from. Like you said, realistically the the one thing that we'd be looking into getting is lighting or another camera. Um, which is fine but yeah I, I just I think in a few months down the line maybe but at the moment it's just a bit okay. So that's my question to you guys. If we can get a hundred comments of talking about whether you'd a support it, b you think it'd be a good idea, or c we shouldn't do it until we've got say five thousand subscribers or ten thousand subscribers. But I, after putting that one video of Craft World Eldar Battle Report, for example, it was a fifteen hundred point game. It's been less than a week, and it's got nearly a thousand views already and our subscribers has jumped up to we got 40 odd subscribers after that video came out alone in the six days which is quite a huge number in our uh, the way our subscribers the, the if the graph was a line graph trajectory yeah the trajectory um and that's because I did an Eldar video and we haven't done an Eldar video in a very long time. What would happen if we would don if if people donated and you were able to have your dwarf army and a lizard men army and we'd have two more fantasy armies and we could safely say, right, we're doing fantasy now, we're secured with that, or we're gonna do orcs and skitari and do a narrative campaign on an outland world. And people would like that and we could well this is it like obviously everybody's been saying <clears> to <throat> us we need to sort out lighting and cameras t-shirts and t yeah t-shirts um, as well but um, I think having a more substantial following mm -hmm. which what would be the minimum amount of subscribers you would be comfortable then to say look guys we're thinking of doing an Indiegogo campaign Dan, Codex Dan had around 5,000 subscribers, no, three to 5,000 subscribers, I think, when he did an Indiegogo campaign for him. Um, oh, oh. And he just does vlogs, but obviously he's been on Mini Wargaming and people know him. Is our chat, we don't know, because it's a YouTube channel, not a business, we don't know if people just come along to, this sim is quite serious, if people come along and they just casually find us subscribe and then just don't watch us again or whether we have people like for example codex phil who always watches our sit and paints and puts lots of questions out sits down and goes what do you know what they've done two videos i'll put them in a bookmark for the weekend i've got some models to do i'll put them in the background and listen to them and have that loyal subscribers that you and this is it i think we have <clears throat> got some loyal subscribers and thank you very much um but i think we also have some subscribers that came across us once went yeah I'll subscribe to them and then perhaps haven't watched us again so I think perhaps waiting a little bit longer um, until we're slightly well, more substantial then well I would say I've been looking I did look at the demographics where if you look at our views in percentage there'd be about 54 Five percent of our total views of people in the United Kingdom. Uh, five to ten percent is Europe. Thirty-five percent is the North Americas and Canada, and then the other percentages are Australia and English-speaking countries around the world. 
So if we did do an Indiegogo campaign and the majority of the views that looked at that video and saw it were from America or Canada, they'd be less likely maybe to do it. But if they were in this country and they were to be like, do you know what? I like what these guys do. I, I can see potential in the fact that they want better quality and I'm helping them to help me because I've got models to paint. I watch their sit and paints. I watch their battle reports. I've watched these guys for a long time and I want to see them go to the next level. So that is why I think it'd be good if you guys out there could comment below and let us know really. If we get 100 comments and 99 people say, yeah, I would, I would donate like a tenner with it and they want this to happen, then it'd be something we think about. But if everyone says no, then we obviously we would wait six months to a year to see how our subscribers go. The way we're going, by, by August, we should be near to 4,000. Um, so yeah, we can see how it goes. That was my question for you and for you guys. What's your big question? Oh, okay, I have two. One's a two-part. Okay. Firstly, do you have any kitchen towels so that I can no. dry my brush? I use um, your foot. <clears throat> oh, I do. This is kitchen towel from ages ago. You couldn't share it. Oh, thank you. My second part would be, if you had a flux capacitor, would you go forwards or backwards in time? I've only got one option. It only use like, yeah, only yeah, yeah. One. So one use, well, well you can return a, trip, trip. Yeah, it's a two use thing, but. If I didn't like anyone, I would go back in time and then go to the future. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then it begs the question, when in time? Like, if I was like, I, do you know what, I really want to see a live dinosaur, but also I really want to see... Go watch Jurassic I will. Um, or I really want to um, see the first cavemen, or I really want to like, have afternoon tea with Winston Churchill, or stuff like that, that'd be cool. But if you go to the future, it's the actual unknown. Like, in a hundred years time, we could have a colony on Mars. Well, we're going to have a colony on Mars. There's businessmen doing it, billionaires who are sorting out a space program um, so that they can be the first ones to the moon and to Mars and colonize it for financial and business gains. But in 500 years time, we could we could be actually have space stations and stuff like that. I think I'd probably go somewhere into the past. What would you do? I'd probably go into the past. Vicky, if you had a time machine and you had the choice of, you could do two trips, the second trip being a return trip, would you go in somewhere into the past or into the future? Past. Past. There you go. Brilliant. Nobody wants to know the future. <laughs> it's the unknown. Okay. <clears throat> However, if you go into the future, you could do a... Um, a Back to the Future 2 and look at all the sports results and then just do loads of bets and make loads of money when you come back. Guaranteed millionaire. But that would change the future. It would form a paradox where it would do an alternate future. So which is true. it may not, it, you wouldn't actually see any of the future that you went and saw. Doesn't matter. You make it, money. That could change the whole world. Yeah, you make money. Money isn't everything. It sure helps. It does, but. Okie dokie. So, question number one is from Shawak02. Question When will the Dark Angels get a new codex so they aren't poop and killing themselves with their favourite weapons? Love the channel. Thanks. Um. Dark Angels aren't rumoured to have a new codex this year. Space Marines are coming up, and whether that has something to do with the other chapters, we'll find out then. Um, I do agree. I think the Dark Angels, they look great, and they've got great history, but they've never been... The, the execution for delivering a good codex has never really been there. And I remember they came out, and 
their tactical squads, I think, was a little bit cheaper or a little bit better than others. And then since then, everyone else has got that. So Dark Angels lost the advantage they had there. They've got a cool, a few good skimmers, and if you like the fluffy list to do with the Raven Guard or whatever, that is fine. But I agree, it's poop, and we've never, I've never lost to them, and. I just think that they're not going to get any love this year. Yeah. Okay. I love your feedback. <laughs> um, J. Ronda. Just recently found this channel. Awesome, guys. Keep it up. Thank you. Quick question. Do you think the jump gargantuan creature rule is a little lazy writing on Games Workshop behalf? What, what, what do you mean? The Wraith Knight hasn't gained any extra movement from this. Not really, but because he's jump, he still can move 12 inches, I'm sure of it. <coughs> um, I like it because it's lazy writing and it benefits me. Uh, I heard a Necron player suggest you add the jump rolls to it, and it took all my willpower to walk away laughing at deep striking night. I would have laughed too. Um, it, Games Workshop is very lazy at writing things, and that's why they have to always put out the errata as an FAQ, and then you, you read them and realise they didn't actually do sort out the things they're supposed to do. <laughs> they just added more problems. <clears throat> yes, they added more problems, but Games Workshop always state they're a model company first, not a rules and gaming company, so... That's their kind of throwback to why their rules are so lazy. But like we've said before, if it's a rules discussion, just talk it out. If, if we talk it out, I mean, what's the logical co course? If, it, if it's gonna benefit one player more than the other, we just kind of sit out and just agree a house ruling. Ezra Holman, what is your honest opinion on the new Wraith Knight and Jet Knight? But WK, but I presume Ray Knight and Jet Knight. This one is for both of you guys. Well, funnily enough, I've bought myself some of the new ones, and there is quite a huge difference visually. So the old ones kind of look, like I said before, looks like a lady's shoe uh, with a guy on it. The, the cone bit at the front is a just like bit of pants. What shoes have you seen ladies wear? Like really pointy shoes with frills at the back. Yeah. Um, the new one is longer, it's more aerodynamic, it's more in tune with the most recent Eldery models that have come out. The Guardian looks a hell of a lot better. The looks wise, I, I like the new ones. Yeah. Um, Gaming wise. The fact that they can now have so many options of um, weapons is great for a Sam Hine army. I don't think in a normal I, uh, game I would upgrade them as much. I I think they're a lot more versatile than they used to. Yes. Um, but the thing is, I think that the whole of the Elder Codex is a lot more versatile than it used to be. Yes. So <clears throat> I, mean, I think it's it's nice to see that um, so Mummy's getting improvements and stuff. Yeah. It's just hopefully they follow suit with. Kind of bringing everybody else up to the same standard. Uh, Wraith Knights, um, of course I'm going to say I like them. Gargantuan creatures, so they feel no pain. Um, it's got D weapon standard. Uh, it's just, just a B. It's got stomp. I think it's stomp in close combat. And it's just, it's just awesome. It's great. But is it overpowered? Currently. 300 points nowadays doesn't seem to be such a huge tax. The things that are 300 points, like Logan, Grimnar, and most Lords of Wars, they're worth their points because they are so overpowered. But if you've got, if every army has overpowered things, then it surely should balance itself out in the long run. Yeah. Um, and Games Workshop wants the bigger models, the Titans, the more expensive models being bought, and that's why they're going to be so great. But yeah, I do like the Wraith Knight. Uh, 
Chris Shingle Decker. Uh, I'm new to Warhammer. <laughs> Is that like a bus? Like it's a dog. Not, it's his name. But well, if that was his actual name, Shingle Decker. The way you said it. If that's his actual full name, and he's sitting here watching that and thinking, do you know what? I mean, hello has just taken the mick out of me. No. After he calls himself I mean, hello. I don't call myself I mean, hello. You do. I am new to Warhammer 40k and have decided on playing Space Wolves. Good army. Yeah. Because I was told that they are a pretty powerful army, and watching your battle reports, I have liked what I have seen with the army. You would be correct. They, in my opinion, are in the top five easily, maybe even top three of power armies. I was hoping that if I included my army list, that you could help me give me some pointers and if it's strong or not. Now I've decided to include more HQs than fast attack. It is 2,000 point army, but it only has 1,967 points right now. Please let me know what you think of the list and what I could possibly do with an extra 33 points. So you do a Wolf Lord with Wolven Stone, Black Death, two Fenrisian Wolves, and a Fun Wolf Mount. Okay. Um, I'd always have a Wolf Lord and a Mount. You've given him Fenrisian Wolves, which will give him extra wounds, which is a good idea for more survivability. Um, I very cheap. Is that each 16 points? Or is that... All together. Combined. So eight yeah. points are... Uh, how many so. wounds do Fenrisian Wolves have? One, I think. Um, I, I always take Runic Armour, that gives him a 2 up armour save on the beast, and I always give him a Storm Shield, so you have a 3 up invulnerable save, so that those last cannons and heart and devastating weapons can't take your warlord down. If they got Cadus Wolfborn with two Fenrisian Wolves, um, I'm seeing a. It's a quick army. Wolves are beasts, aren't they? Yeah, um, again, another wolf lord, which is great. You've got these two guys which can go up and be your little assassin units and take down your opponent's units whilst drawing fire. You've then got a rune priest, um, a mastery level 2 with psychic hood and a runic staff. Then you've got Najal Stormcaller. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'll come back to my umming. Uh, you've got two grey hunter units, uh, three grey hunter units with rhinos. It makes sense if you've got the points. Two dreadnoughts in drop pots with hellfrost cannon, great wolf claw, and storm bolter. Great cheap choice. Two long fang units with three extra long fangs, two last cannons, two missile launchers, melter gone for the ancient. Low grimnar in storm rider. Great choice most of the time. Um, what I would say <coughs> is. How much is a rhino? 30, uh, 35 points. I would say... How much? So that's... In your local meta, and people you see and go against... 70. Do you see a lot of psychic... Do you have armies where you have a lot of psychers? If yes, then keep the Rune Priest and Nizhao Stormcaller for the defensiveness of them psychically and the offensiveness psychically. If you can do something in every phase, it's going to help you out. Personally though, if you've got the Wolf Lord and Canis Wolfborn, I would suggest possibly taking Najal out, um, or the Rune Priest, and having a look at Thunder Wolf Cavalry, nope. because they are quite devastating. Each of them on the charge, or being charged, because they've got counterattack, I think has five attacks each. They also have rending as well, which is going to kill things in close combat on a roll of a six to wound most of the time. And they've always been great with a melter bomb upgrade, and then I put them with the Wolf Lord or Canis Wolf Board, and then they definitely won't die. Um, and that's how I use them. The rest of the army is good. Uh, you've got your Hellfrost Cannons and your Dreadnoughts, which is a brilliant weapon in itself. Um, you've got your heavy support units, which are at the back, causing all the firing. A good destructive army, where your opponent has to pick and choose what to shoot at. Um, and if they choose wrong, they're going to have two, essentially, Wolf Lords and Logan Grimnar in their face already. Whilst the Grey Hunters take objectives and stuff like that. So yeah, not a bad list. If you could let us know on <clears throat> on future battle reports or just message us on our YouTube channel, 
let us know how your army goes, but I would consider Thunderwolf Cavalry um, as well. How much is that doggy in the window? Or how much is the air wolf, the non-transport one? 200, just like 215, 220 points ish. Okay, so that list has what, 1960? Yeah. Uh, I'd possibly. If you took Najao out, you could have one of the new flyers. I'd possibly take out the three rhinos as well. Because effectively, you've got your disruption on the wolves. So you've got the, the wolf lord and Canis Wolfborn riding up doing damage. Um, you've also possibly got then uh, Logan. Um, and then you've got your drop pods. So effectively your Grey Hunters don't necessarily need to get up there that quick. They could be like a second wave. Um, and with support from the Long Fangs, um, I'd be inclined to, to look into something big, a big shooter, because obviously you've got a lot of close combat in there, mm -hmm. so yeah, maybe take out um, the Well, they've got big shooters with their long fangs and health frost cannon dreadnoughts, Which and then Logan and Grimnar's going to be, yeah, but one will be in turn yeah, one, will. and then you're likely to get it in turn two, and then the it just kind of... <clears throat> I know Space Wolves are immense at close combat, it just kind of gives them a bit of more options. Um, a bit more sustainability as well. Okay, yeah, next question is from That Wargamer. Do you find playing against yourself advantageous and do you find it fun? Well, you always win. Are you referring to we play just each other pretty much most of the time? Or the fact that the other day I did a battle report of Craft World Elder versus my grey knights and it was just me. Um, did I find it fun? Not so much when it was on my own, um, even though it was good to find out how well the Eldar could do. Playing against each other is always fun um, and we always look for to play more opponents, um, either at Warhammer World or Jonathan who lives near us. Um, finally, what's your favourite legion? Uh, what, in, in, in 40k or in life or...? Ah, uh, for legion. Delta legion, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Rhys Taylor. Hey guys, have you seen the Warlord Titan Fudge World? Are making and do you think they will do an Imperator Titan? Is that also nice to be Forge World? Yeah, but Forge World. Also, have you played against Corn Demon King yet? Um, I haven't seen the new Warlord Titan. I do know, uh, I did read that they are doing a lot of new stuff. And I'm sure they will do <coughs> an Imperator Titan because um, they want to make lots of money and Titans are a good way of doing that. I definitely think it would be coming. Uh, also, have you played Demon Corn Demon King yet? No. Ian is the resident Chaos Space Marine player, and I have looked into demons, uh, but no one around here plays demons, unfortunately. I've seen Mini Wargaming Dave do it, and he's had a lot of fun doing it, but um, no, we haven't played against anyone. Craig Hoyland. What one army have you both had the most overall success with through all editions of the game? So, really, um, there's only been two armies that we've both collected at one stage or another. Ah, three. Unless he's written that, so. Okay. To both of us. The. On one side, the three armies that we've both had are Tau, mm -hmm. Chaos. Chaos, and Necrons. Yeah. Um, of those, I'd say... Necrons. I would say that Necrons have been the most 
from successful, our, even though that they got relegated. Um, however, from our own armies, yours <coughs> would be Space Wolves. Yes, but I've had Elder a very long time, and they've won the Christmas Cup Once. a few times. Once. Once, and came second in the leagues. Tyranids have won the leagues twice. Space Wolves have won the Christmas Cup once. I was... Twice. Yeah, I guess... Space Wolves then. If you look at how short a period you've had them compared to the other two, and their success rate, Space Wolves are your mm. strongest. Yours? Uh, it would be Tau. Uh, one... Castle LP. Are you going to Warhammer World this weekend? If you are, can you make a video and post it to your channel? I read on your on the website that they are showcasing some cool stuff. No, we're not, unfortunately. Um, there's only a few times we both have Saturdays off. Uh, we both work on Sundays. Uh, we're not planning to go to Warhammer World until June or July. June or July, and we're going to take our friend Chris who is featured sometimes playing Xbox in the background. Um, he's, he is Batman. He's got um, an or orc army that he's just at the moment enjoying painting. So he's doing it slowly and casually uh, and we'll take him to Warhammer Almost World. Almost as slow and casual as my dwarves. <laughs> and uh, we'll do that. But no, we're not going to Warhammer World this weekend, unfortunately. Um, so that's why. Uh, Percy Hudson, have you guys thought of branching into other games at all? Warm a fancy, yes? Other than that, yes and no. Not I've like played other games, but. Have you played War Machine? Uh, you don't like the look of War Machine. Once I don't like twice. I don't like the look of Infinity. Um. I've played like Blood Bowl, played Star Wars um, X Wing. Um, I've played a few other ones. I'd give Space Hulk a go, but I haven't done it recently. So. I'd like to play Dungeons and Dragons once for a few people, but it's a bit boring on video. Um, I think if we had our a studio. Might be a bit different. We might yeah. have. We'd venture into like some board games to do related to what we do. <clears throat> what was that recent that game you got with the cards? Uh, I can't remember. Conquest. Conquest. Um, they've got a new the new Games Workshop Assassin board game with the models and got Space Hulk and stuff. They look interesting as well. So we would, but it's more of a hobby, and unfortunately, we can't afford to get other. Games. Um, the Dark Artisan. Firstly, guys, keep up the awesome work. We will try. Please comment about the uh, Indiegogo campaign. Gave you a shout out on my channel. I have a couple of questions. Thanks! Um, I will write that down and I'll have a little look at your channel. Don't You've already looked. Yeah, but I want to see the shout out. If you followed me, you'll know I've been travelling the North East and gaming in other clubs and meeting more people. Is it something you would consider doing, bearing in mind how much you and Ian, Ian Hello play each other? Does it never get stale despite how many different armies you have? No. Um, playing your... one of the oldest and closest buddies. Uh, we can play Xbox. Hey, fine. what are you saying? You call me old. You were a little bit old. <laughs> um, we can go out and kick a ball about and, ha and have fun. We can play Warhammer and it will never be the same thing twice. We do narrative campaigns, we do missions, we could be in silly moods, we could be doing silly accents, we could be being really strict and argumentative. Constructively. It's not, yeah, it's a debate um, more than an argument. One time Vicky thought we were having an argument, we were just talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, you say that it's the never the same game twice, but last um, last battle league, mm. I think it was chaos versus tyranids or something. 
or Chaos vs. Necron as we played it, and then we completely forgot and played exactly the same game. <laughs> um, so no, it doesn't really get stale, and yet I would love to meet people, and if they were willing to be filmed and stuff, do it. Uh, Jonathan has brilliant, his garage is just converted into a Warhammer haven, and it's got a ta gaming table, all his models, it's brilliant. We've, we've battled a few times, but he has a family, so it's hard, we, it'd be like Monday evenings or an evening in the week, but that's hard for us, the fact that we, we kind of work shifts, as we're in the leisure industry, um, so it's kind of hard to kind of meet up. I mean, for me, I work in school term time, so Easter, summer, and Christmas, I have off, so I can just do stuff. I could go to Warhammer World every day in the summer. Actually, I knew you'd look at me. <laughs> um, the only problem with that is we've always said that going to Warhammer World is like going to Disneyland and not going on any rides if you don't buy anything. Yeah. So and to be fair, you you we you came always to have to World, buy something, and you love the food. The food is brilliant there. The huge burgers. Um, no, so it's never stale. But yes, I would like to just battle. The thing is, Jonathan asked me once, "Do you ever just want to come over and have a battle, or come to our? I think it's in St Neots, his his group, his wargaming group. Just come and have a battle. Don't film. Just have a battle. And we haven't done that in a while. Um, but I would." like to do that but now the channel is part of my wargaming hobby so what was that oh! <laughs> ah! um but we've done invitations out before to people to war go to warhammer world and on a certain date but it's always been really awkward for other people to do it but i guess in the summer if we give people enough notice and if people comment in the comment section below we could plan to have four to six players and we could have a huge get one of the huge tables and do a huge battle it'd be really cool um, to do that um, secondly would you accept challenges from subscribers to your channel if so I'd be up for a road trip and would love to challenge either or both of you yeah can make a day of it if we if you could do a Saturday and we both had a Saturday off I don't know how far away you live um, or if we could meet a Warhammer world, we'd be happy about doing a challenge. Um, if you've got somewhere to do it, or everything, because it's a little bit difficult at ours, because we do it in my living room, and we have people back and forth coming here, and you do yours, and at yours the living room. If you have a room somewhere at yours, we could do it. Or again, Warhammer world, or a gaming group that do it at some point. Yeah, definitely. Um, Codex Phil. He's only done 15 questions this time. I what? Feel. Slacking Codex Phil. Slacking. Um, as always, the channel has never ceased to impress any wargamer that has existed. Thank you very much. It's we are just a couple of... Very much. We're just a couple of guys. Just... Yes, the accent. Wait, <laughs> yes. We're just a couple of guys. Who is yeah, it? Lloyd, Gro Lloyd Grossman. Lloyd Grossman. Lloyd Grossman. Lloyd. Right. So, with the tomato and basil. So, thanks, Karen Spill. We've been working really hard to have a laid back. Stop looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> um, we aim to just show our personalities on the channel. We enjoy having fun, laid back. Sometimes we're competitive, but we, we just want to throw content out there so you can have easy watching and just either casually watch it or paint models and watch it, that's what we want to do. And hopefully you will continue to do this channel for centuries to come, and old folk will sing tales of the greatness that is Mark and Ian. I hope so too. Fifteen questions here as well. <clears throat> Number one! I need help with guard. A guard like protecting you, or I'm presuming <laughs> Imperial Guard. I'm planning on making an army with them, but so far I can't the same levels as the new Eldar, Tal, Dark Eldar, Necrons. Could you give me some pointers into what they bring? Okay, this is actually, this is related to us right now. Ian purchased them. You, this was your, kind of like your secret army for the Christmas yeah, you Cup. you didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything about it, but then when we did the Christmas Cup, I spent a good few hours, I think, when you were here, 
reading the codex, and I made a list of just pure tanks, and I know people have enjoyed doing all Air Force Army or Ground Tanks Army and stuff like that. And I thought, we both predicted they would be doing amazingly in our um, tournament. At the moment, they're not. No, it's because all of the <coughs> armies have, like, anti... Yeah, I've, ri I've written lists to go against the tanks it's and stuff. Like tank. um, I do agree they're not as powerful as those, the armies you've given examples for. But if you were to play Orcs or Tyranids and you had a battle gun of tank Lehman Russ goodness, you would do extremely well in that case scenario. My... I, I don't know in pure regard. I, the list I've written is essentially 12 Lehman Russes in the various four source slots you've got. Imperial Guard don't have any detachments yet, but they would be the most ideal army in 7th edition to have battle formations and stuff and giving you bonuses. And until that codex does come out, you're stuck with what you've got. So, so I think you've got two ways of playing it. You've got the spam the infantry or spam the tank. I would spam the tanks and have... What? What is going on with you? Loads of battle cannons doing as much damage as you possibly could. You don't like tanks. I do in Imperial Guard. So that would be the thing I'd recommend. Lots and lots of tanks. Yeah. Uh, if you could, if you want, you can drop us a, a, a list that you've written or that you're, or armies that you're having trouble against and we can give you some pointers again. Number two. Avengers Age of Ultron. Give us your review. Where do I start? It is epic. And it's just amazeballs. Now, there's a lot of people in reviews giving it not so great scores just because it didn't live up to the hype. Now, Avengers, the, the first Avengers, was it Avengers Assemble or something like that? That was one of the greatest in, at the time, the ultimate comic book story. Fans of new, old, or people who hadn't seen it, have come away saying they really enjoyed it. How do you make something better and go beyond that? Well, I think they did. Um, you don't have to worry with backstories and you can develop certain characters you didn't in the first one. I would say it is definitely there in the top three of Marvel films for me. I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy, the Captain America Winter Soldier, and this one is in my top three of Marvel films, definitely. I I like the plot. I like the fact that they didn't have the rights to mutants and stuff like that. So Scarlet Witch and uh, Quicksilver would what do they call them enhanced or something like that. They give them a little terminology which just suggested they've been experimented on and were given these powers rather than being mutants. And and it still worked out well. The jokes were great. The action sequences were brilliant. And the thing is. It's a comic Solid. book film. Like, some comic book films come away from that. Like, if you go into the DC comic kind of side of things, they're a bit darker, they're a bit deeper, they're, you yeah. don't really have the comic-esque feel. It's more like a real life... It's more graphic novel, like yeah. dark sides of graphic novels. Whereas, Marvel tend to keep it light-hearted, keep it as a comic book film. And they do have, like, dark sides. The fact that... If you watch it, the whole series about all the Iron Mans, the last Avengers and all that, Tony Stark has post-traumatic stress disorder from what's happened. <laughs> He's an alcohol. He was an alcoholic, um, a philanthropist of loving women, essentially, and finding it hard to settle down with someone, finding it hard to trust, and having slight OCD about protecting the world now. He's got all these flaws and dark side to him, which is essentially what leads to Ultron being built, but there's still comic elements to it, whereas in like Batman or the new Superman versus Batman, they're going down the dark, even darker sides and looking at the graphic novels that were written and that's what's inspiring them, Yeah. rather than the Superman being the Boy Scout kind of, I'm never going to hurt anyone, and then in the last Superman film he killed someone, which I liked that film. 
a lot, and, and, and I thought it was more realistic. That's right, what I'm and saying. stepped they've, away. They've like, added a bit more realism to DC Comics, but then at the same time, Marvel are still quite mm-hmm. light-hearted with it. So both kind of sides are doing quite well with it, and it's, it's they, and they're going a different direction, yeah. which is great to see. They're not. They're obviously competing against each other, but it's different styles For instance, and genres. The Aquaman, everybody's favourite superhero. <laughs> um, there's going to be a film out because obviously there's going to be a Justice League of America mm-hmm. film, um, which includes Aquaman, um, and he isn't the blonde head, blue eyes guy that he always the was. The 60s camp guy. Yeah. It's like I'm going to throw starfish at you. <laughs> Uh, if you you better come into the sea and I'll stop you. But if you're on the shore, I can't do anything. Exactly. He He's... is inspired from the most recent Aquaman thing, where he has been underwater and he he's essentially lives what's Atlantis essentially underwater. His his bones and skin are under such high pressure of the seas. He is bulletproof. He is strong. He has magical elements to him. He could give Superman a slight run for his money. Superman is weak against magic. He is a king to a whole of the seas and oceans. It's if Thor and who's the god of the sea? Who's the, who's Ariel's dad? Neptune. Triton. Neptune. Triton. Yeah. If they had if oh, Thor and the name of the little man? Yeah, if, if Thor and him had a baby boy, it would be the new kind of Aquaman. He would be badass and powerful. And so they've, they have made it a bit darker, which is fine, because that's the route they've gone with it. Whereas, as I said, Marvel have stayed with yeah. the, the comic feel, and I like that as well. Uh, number three. If Gordon Ramsay walked into your house right now and called you a cute cucumber, what would you do? Uh, it's just a cute combat. It's not oh. a cute cucumber. It's okay. a cute cucumber. I would say <laughs> that's blue bloody murder of the English tongue. And you sort yourself out. That. You wouldn't say that. I'd say make Pardon. if you're in my house, make me a meal. I dare thee. Um, number four. Which film are you looking most forward to this summer? I want to say Fantastic this Four. I think that's going to be one where the critics will be mixed, but it actually be a movie that's quite enjoyable and different. Uh, and because <clears throat> it looks, it's, it's again, it's mature. It's a ma- more mature version of the last. Fantastic. They're going with a more, the, again more recent, younger, more recent comic books of Fantastic Four, where they've stripped it back. They go into another dimensions, this is how they got their powers, and the dimensions are kind of opened up, and there's dark things in these dimensions and stuff, uh-huh. rather than the things, the, the camp kind of comic books from the past that people know. Jurassic World, is that correct? Jurassic World, that, that's, that's But the right. end of the year, Star Wars. Star Wars. Absolutely, without a doubt, Star Wars. Can't wait. Uh, five, general election thoughts. It happened. I voted, I lost. <laughs> I didn't. Sorry. Um, you keep getting one seat was hilarious that Nigel Farage didn't get that seat. Um, I feel sorry for Labour and Lib Dems, for what, especially Lib Dems, they, they really they messed up. Tranced. Conservatives in the majority is good for rich people generally, uh, and private sector from what I've seen uh, however it's going to be interesting to see how we've got five years of them and there's a lot of propaganda about certain things that's going to happen it'd be interesting to see what does happen but I didn't want a majority conservative government in they weren't their policies that they said they're going to do weren't really aimed for me um, whereas other parties were you didn't vote, I'm presuming. I didn't. Uh, may the force be with you. What did you do to celebrate Star Wars Day? I went to work. I had a barbecue at my work. Basically, we all had the day off, so everybody from the work place mm. went to work, even though we weren't working, because we've got like a big area. So we all went 
had a bit of football, played a bit of ultimate frisbee, uh, chilled out, had a barbecue, got a bit sunburnt. Um, my family had a barbecue and it's my granddad's birthday on May the 4th, which is brilliant. He is one part he Jedi. He is Jedi. Seven, what are your thoughts on the Space Marine rumours? I think they're great, they're going to happen, it's going to help out, bring them into the 7th edition. I can see a lot of formations happening from there, maybe even more so than normal, and potentially formations of different uh, it's not legions, chapters, like uh, Black Templars one or something, I'm not sure. But yeah, I think it's going to happen, and Space Marines do need a bit of a buff. They are kind of a middle to second tier army, I would say. Have you seen any of the rumours? Yeah. But you've pretty much covered everything. Okay, you can answer this one. Number eight. What is your opinion on the future of 40k and the Path Games Workshop and taking it? Um... Quick on your toes, aren't you? Ian? No, I am. Like a dwarf. I am a hippo. Um, okay, the future. The future of. Is Warhammer 40K. 40, Is Games Workshop making 40k? Are they doing well with it? Of course they are. They're losing profits every year, but they are making profit. Um, I think what with the mix of like 30k pushing in as well, it's just kind of kept it fresh. You look in this year alone, how many, we've, you've got Harlequins as a standalone army. You've got Skitari have a standalone army. They haven't added in new armies since Necrons and Tau in 2003, 4? We, 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 we were in your turn. Um, well, I thought it was before that. Um, other direction of it though I don't know you there and the Path Games Workshop are taking it the Games Workshop are taking it so that you have to buy more models than ever as a business it's a very clever idea yeah um, there are formations where I would have to get a million more aspects or not that many I um and you the, the thing is it gives you as much as you say that, to play it that way, they give you to play a, like a detachments and all that. That's fine, and realistically, that is the um, if you're playing competitively. So if you're playing out in tournaments and stuff like that, yes, you do need to do that. But we play each other, and if we play anybody else. Most of the time it would be for a bit of fun. There may be a bit of a competitive element to there, but it would be fun, so you could do whatever you want with it. And you literally can do whatever you want with your armies now. So in that aspect, I kind of think it's, it's all right. If you are going down the super serious competitive side, then yeah, you do have to spend a bit of money, but five, six hundred quid for an army, that, like, once again, that you use over and over, you get to paint, you, yeah. Yeah, but that's, that's the thing, it's like, I've properly collected Eldar since 2009. I've had to spend in those years, with updates and stuff, a few hundred pounds. And that's the idea, they want you to keep you there, they will make some units rubbish, they will make some units brilliant. And then they'll make formation, so you have to buy more stuff. So that's the way they're going, and that's as a business very clever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So number nine, me and a bunch of my friends have started War Machine and Hordes. Do you see yourself starting these anytime soon, or even at all? If we did an Indiegogo campaign, yes, 
I would collect one of those armies because I have always liked the model, some of the factions models, as a collector point of view. And we would do the odd game here and there, but you're not a huge fan of how they look. Well, the thing is, we've been... I know it's not um, necessarily because we've been kind of on the verge of fantasy for a while. Um, and if we were then to like start another one, it's it's a lot of like dilution into what we already do. Yeah. <clears throat> Again, financially probably not, but if we did an Indigo Indigo campaign, there's nothing stopping us using that money to get two factions, building it up, learning how to play it, and doing a game once a month or whatever, just so we have that out there. Number 10, would you ever consider doing any board games videos, for example, Game of Zombie Side with some friends? Um, again, my answer would be yes, if we did the Indigo yeah. campaign. As I, said, uh, as I said earlier, actually, some of it is difficult because of shifts, some of it is difficult because we can't always just be playing here, because it's, it's a living, living room. It's a living room. Um, but at the same time, now and again, like we could organise something like a board game of that kind of ilk as a one-off type type thing, and then develop it from there. But I, I don't know. I think we'd have to have a bit more of a studio, like I said. Um, Eleven views on Cult Mechanicus. They're a great-looking army. 12. Views on the Assassins. Um, you realise you've done none of your Elder. I know, I'm going to be reading these out. I'll do them another time. Um, assassins. I love the look of the models. Yeah. The game looks interesting. Uh, 13, Rafe Knight. How over the top has Games Workshop made him? We've kind of answered this. Is he overpowered? Yes and no. Yes at the minute, but I'm sure that they'll catch everybody else up. So just be patient. Imper <coughs> Imperial Knights are getting a whole load of new stuff coming out. I'm sure that will be horrible. As in o like overpowered and crazy. 14, do you expect to see anything else updated? to become the level of OP, like the Wraith Knight. Yes. Pure Knights. What characters do you think will be released this year? Space Marines. Space Marines. Um, they've got Fantasy coming out. Maybe Space Marines in the, in the August. And then in the autumn, winter months, maybe more stuff for Fantasy. Then Tau are rumoured to be having some stuff as well. So only two or three at most. I think they're going to concentrate a bit more on fantasy. And thank you for asking the questions. Thank you thank for posting. You for posting. Carl Finch. Always enjoying the sit and paints, guys. Thank you. Keep up the great work with your channel. Thank you. My question is, to, is do you ever listen to any music while you play? Or paint to get you in the mood? Playing, no. Just because if... YouTube pick up any copyrighted music in the background, they tell you off, essentially. For painting, I usually watch videos or a film rather than listening to music. What do you...? Um, yeah, so, obviously, about the thing, we can't really... Um, he said, I have found that it can really add to the atmosphere of the game. Yeah, when we go to Warhammer World and they have like the Hobbit music and all this epic music in the background. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's good, but unfortunately we can't, we can't do that. But um, painting and stuff, um, just something kind of in the background normally. Like you said, either a, a battle report or a, a sit and talk with Matt on mini war gaming. Sometimes I do put on music like today. I had some Mumford and Sons on actually. Oh. Um, I haven't done that side of his horns. 
And you said there's some great soundtracks, for instance, that make a game feel much more cinematic. Cheers, gents. I agree. Um, do you have any favourite ones that you use? <laughs> that was a huge cut from you. <laughs> That's almost the sound of this dinosaur. <laughs> um, and the last question, whilst we're filming, Brooks Newsom. Do you or Ian Hello see a Skatari appearing in any upcoming background? If we did an Indiegogo campaign, I would collect Skitari <laughs> army. army. Mm. And that would be the yes. So comment below if you would support this. You're not a huge fan of how they look, so I doubt you'd probably... You've said, yeah. you've been in the shop, and I've said, what do you think? It's like, yeah, but you look at him. And then you started talking about it, and then I wandered off into my fantasy Exactly. Life. So I could have said... Mm. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. <laughs> Quite simply. What do you think of this? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> think about it. I'll get back to you in 100 years. It's not a shiny gem, is it? It's not a shiny gem, just... You know. I haven't mined it from the caves of... somewhere. If you were a dwarf, what would your mountain horde be called? My mountain horde? Right, your hold up. Hold up? What would you do if you were, <laughs> if you were a dwarf? If I was a dwarf? You were the king in a, in a little... You had a mountain and you had a big gate post at the side of the mountain and people were to knock on the door to say hi. <laughs> what would your little kingdom be? on the spot much. I don't know. Say in a hundred years. I thought <laughs> I haven't did. mind it. <laughs> what would your elf village be called? It would be a village. In the tree. It would be a citadel in the forest. Known as Fumbai. <laughs> Part Spanish, part Elm. <laughs> Spanish Elms. Bring. What's that? They play their bow like a guitar. <laughs> it would be something like I don't know. Legolas, what do you want Elf I see? <laughs> They're taking the Hobbit to Isengard. He'd <laughs> grab Gimli and make him spin it round and. We all are wasted on darkness. Um. <laughs> what was the name of it again? Umbare. <laughs> Means citadel of elves. Okay. In Barcelona. So, um, if there's a uh, in um, Umbare, Umbongo, you drink it in the jungle. Um, what would the uh, dinosaur sound like? Doom 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 Okay, so give me some examples of what dwarf kingdoms <laughs> Espanol <laughs> Name some dwarf kingdoms. What in fantasy? Not just in Everything. Moria. Moria. El Moria. <laughs> What's the last Hobbit? Where are they? Um, the Misty Mountain. El Misty Man. You know. Espanol. <laughs> um, I would probably call it after the place where I was born, because that sounds pretty cool, and dwarfish. Germany. <laughs> yeah, the, the actual place in Germany where I was born, so... There you go. Some good specific details wow. there. 
Guess where he was born in Germany. That could be, uh, that'd be funny. If you get it right, you get a air high five. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Um, this has been a long and quite entertaining sit and paint for all of us in the room, I feel. Even. Nodding her head, indeed. yes, indeed. Um, <gasps> You've done some lizard men, not dwarves. I've not it? done any dwarves, you're right. Again, leave comments below about what you think about an Indiegogo campaign, if it would be a good idea or not, or whether we should, we should wait. So thanks very much for watching. I've been Mark from the Xenovich channel. I've been Ian. And we will see you on the next video. You're going to say it. Goodbye. <laughs>